Hello, this is Reverb Audio, and now I'm, we are going to tackle a very uh, ubiquitous problem, I would say, uh, because I have seen, I mean, I have shown <laughs> in the past couple of videos a couple of examples for drivers, uh, such as the, the Fostex um, small format full range driver, the FV103 series, but also we have seen example for the Akuton mid range driver. And uh, but there's like uh, hundreds and thousands of more example when you when you look at drivers that cover the mid range, uh, a lot of them have this uh, dip uh, somewhere between the one to two kilohertz region, and uh, and they're usually what uh, speaker manufacturers uh, do to solve this problem is then they add an electronic notch filter. So, so what they do is they, they cut off the region surrounding it uh, to, so for example, when we look at the Akuton driver here, uh, we have that dip starting around one kilohertz and going back to two kilohertz. I mean, then, then coming back up and then it starts dropping again. So what people do is, uh, and also I've got a very nice uh, comment uh, and uh, uh, let me see, can I find it? Uh, can we find it in the notifications? Uh, or is this... Can we find it? Let's see. Now we are just scrolling down. You see, I, I got like tons and tons of comments. It was Bob's comment, but it's, it's not showing up here. You see, it's not so easy to, to find a comment that I'm looking for. Basically, it's almost impossible. Uh, so anyway, I have seen that Bob uh, made that comment that he has loudspeakers that use these drivers and, uh, and uh, he noticed that they are dark in, the, in tonality and the darkness of the tonality that's caused by that dip uh, between one and two kilohertz and uh, what uh, what he did, what I did to his speaker, was to introduce a 1.5 dB filter. Uh, so to cut the peak before that 1 kilohertz, so that uh, the the dip is not not so sudden, but it's more like 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 a, a pleasant slope instead of a sudden drop. And when you make the transition uh, uh, more, uh, like not so sudden, then then it becomes a, a very audible uh, improvement in the sound because uh, we will always have uh, ups and downs in the frequency response curve. Uh, but there is the thing that if you can make those uh, valleys and peaks not so sudden then for the ear it will be much more natural. However, let's go back uh, to, to why I was making this video, is that these dips, why are they in the sound uh, for these mid-range drivers? Uh, we see, always see this happening between one and two kilohertz. And, and why are we seeing there and what is actually the, I would say, probably the best way to fix it? better than using a, a, a notch filter because here I will show you why it happens. It happens because the, the sound waves where that uh, dip is happening, they correspond to the half wavelength of the driver basket. And, and essentially when you're looking at how the mid-range driver generates the sound, the mid-range sounds are coming from the cone. So basically uh, the cone is itself a horn. Why? Because it's a cone-shaped horn. It's not a flat surface, but the, the sides are, it forms a horn. And, uh, and as a horn, it does amplify these uh, sound waves, which are in between the half wavelength of the dome shape and the half wavelength of the perimeter, I mean, of the totality of the cone. And however, once the sound waves, the frequency goes, uh, becomes as big that the half wave 
requires the support of the dome to form then from for these frequencies uh, the amplification is less and less because we are not getting the horn effect of the cone anymore uh, but we have like there there's the surround we have a dip or or or, or a peak so that if, it, if it's a peak, so if your surround is peaking out, that will add an extra boost to the frequencies. So around 1 kHz you'll get an extra boost to the sound, but then at the other side of the cone where it comes back, then it will start dropping and the drop will be much more pronounced versus having an inverted uh, surround. When you have an inverted surround, then the response will be dropping more, uh, and then that's what you can uh, see, for example, in the case of the Akuton as well, and, uh, and many, all of those drivers which have these inverted surrounds. And then when you hit the edge of the basket, then because if the basket is not mounted flush with the surface, then there's an additional drop. That's the width of your basket. And that's, that will also show up as a loss in the frequency response so let's have a look at this here so you see those frequencies which are between the half wavelength of here and there they are these frequencies so you see we have a, a nice amplification for those frequencies when we go higher than that you see there is a dip and there is the dip because this is a valley between the dome and the cone and, and that valley basically uh, it creates a phase interference problems and, and there's, there's a suck out for those frequencies. But then uh, we are climbing up in the frequency response and we have a peak that uh, basically corresponds to the uh, half wave and then the wavelength of the dome itself. And when it becomes the wave becomes bigger then the dome can support then you see these breakup modes happening because there is a, a break in the surface so we have a v-shape here and and that's why we observe that dip over there and and then we start to see it dropping because uh, if the sound wave is is uh, much smaller than the cone then we are going to to see phase problems because we cannot reproduce such high frequencies anymore however when we reach that wavelength which is uh, there that that's supported by by the cone itself then we see a massive drop and and we see that massive drop because of the surround and the basket and then after the drop it it catches up uh, but but then we will start to lose efficiency because because the cone is just too small to to produce wavelength which is much larger than the size of the cone itself. So this is the physics how loudspeakers work, and uh, and and as you see that these these big dips are and it's especially this dip that's created by the. Uh, by by the fallout of the horn of the front loading i mean the front horn loading of the loudspeaker because actually the cone itself is horn loading your loudspeaker and when you have horn loading you can rear load a horn or front load of course here this is a front horn loading because it's going to uh, the front the front wave so what you can do to mitigate this uh, dip here and I would say in, in a quite uh, uh, shocking fashion or you can almost completely remove that big valley from there is instead of mounting your loudspeaker in the front of your baffle mount it behind the baffle and then make sure that your baffle is not square like coming up just a hole but rotary it down so so it forms a nice uh, um, nice uh, radius and it's not just a flat trough because if it's just a flat surface so you cut a hole on your buffer and mount the speaker from behind then if because that that hole is straight then there will be a certain frequency which will be amplified by that horn 
and, and that's the worst possible effect that you can add to the sound. That's why you need to either just cut it in a slope if you can, and it, it's even better if you can corner it down, rotor it down. And when you do that, then basically all of these frequencies here that are just drastically dropped because uh, there is this big baffle width here for the basket instead of that this will be behind that uh, the front baffle and it will be adding a nice horn loading continuing the profile of the cone because as long as you continue the profile of this cone if you continue it to infinity then basically it will be able to acoustically support much much larger sound waves of course you cannot uh, uh, continue this ad infinitum but if you can continue it with, with a small uh, extension of this front cone horn and then uh, continue it with uh, a front baffle then this this peak i mean this valley here will uh, largely disappear if you can play around with the exact uh, cutout for the for the cone and the exact profile, the exact depth, then then you can acoustically engineer this to perfectly disappear. Uh, you you will need experimentation for that, but even without any experimentation, if you just uh, take your cone and uh, take it out from the your loudspeaker router the edge so that it, it's it's a nice slope instead of a hole and you mount it from behind you will already see so much of this dip disappear that it will uh, not disappear and uh, you will not hear anymore that darkness in the tonality and the darkness in the sound and and also as a continuation for my application notes for the Fostex driver if you want to use this driver even as an open baffle or, or in any other kind of uh, cabinets, I, I really strongly uh, recommend to mount it from behind. Do not mount it in front of your uh, baffle and, and then use this nice little horn loading and that will uh, eliminate the biggest uh, weakness of this loudspeaker that, that creates this dip in the mid-range. And, and also for Andre, that he mentioned that, that he has uh, uh, the FE103 NV uh, drivers, is that there is that big uh, dip between uh, uh, these two frequencies. And, and, and this is a nice way how to correct that. And it's, it's much, much better to correct it in an acoustic way because an acoustic problem should be always corrected in the acoustic domain so when we have an electric problem the best result will be gained by collecting it electronically and if you have an acoustic problem it should be treated in the uh, domain where it occurs and uh, of course if we have an acoustic problem and if we add a filter there and then we, we create a, a, a slope or we filter out these frequencies then we can make the slope uh, uh, more benign but then we will be sacrificing efficiency so the output will be less and, and the network is going to eat up a lot of energy it's going to change drastically change the way the loudspeaker uh, interacts with your amplifier and it's going to affect not that frequency range but but basically the entire behavior or entire dynamics between the uh, loudspeaker and amplifier and it's always going to come at a loss of efficiency which which is uh, a loss of life however uh, why we usually hear it as an still as an improvement because the tonality improves but but if we treat this problem in the acoustic domain then we get the improvement in the tonality plus we gain an improvement in efficiency as well instead of loss of efficiency so i hope uh, this video was uh, useful and in ev basically every single case when you have an 8 inch driver or smaller then uh, if you uh, do a little 
extra additional front horn loading to supplement your horn, which is the loudspeaker itself, uh, then it's going to be much more beneficial than having your horn and suddenly break it up with, with the nasty basket. So the loudspeaker basket is acoustically the biggest culprit for, for mid-range offenders. So all those offenses that happen between one and two kilohertz. And uh, so thank you for tuning in and I hope uh, many of you will try out uh, changing this, uh, the alignment. Of course, if you have multi-way speakers, if you load it behind your buffer, then uh, you are going to change the time alignment of your loudspeaker as well. So, so that brings up a whole new uh, series of issues. But so if your loudspeakers were time aligned before, then that will uh, change things up a little bit better. But there is no perfect time alignment, and uh, and then you will see that 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 would be like a se several hours long topic for discussion to get into time alignment. So for now, just I would recommend to try it out and. Uh, and have fun. Bye-bye.